Today on the Gearhead Garden, we are going to be looking at some of the heirloom figs that are available from local nurseries and grow prolific here in Southern California. So if this is something you're interested in, let's get started. Okay, I took a little drive to the Green Thumb Nursery in Ventura, California, which isn't too bad of a drive, about 30 minutes from my house. But it's great because this is like our first day we haven't had any rain in a number of weeks. And as you can see, they had a great variety of these figs. I picked out a couple. I'm going to take them home. I wish I could have taken them all home, but there was a couple varieties that I didn't have in my mother plant heirloom collection. So I thought I would go ahead and grab a couple and bring them home. I might even go back and get just a couple more. All right, so let's take a look at what I got. Okay, we're back in the shop. The sun is still shining. Look at that, 70 degrees here in Southern California after torrential rains. All right, here's the two pigs I figured out picked out. This is the Canadria, which I really never heard of until now, but sounds interesting. And then we have the Osborne Prolific. Both of these are good for coastal climates, um, just, you know, about 30 miles away from the coast, so it's not so bad here sometimes, but we'll have to see how these do in the, in the hot sun. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to up pot these to the bigger pots, get them labeled, and then I'm going to cut these down to the desirable height so I could have more Cuttings to play with. So tight, we will be back. All right, I'm back up door, outdoors. We're going to get ready to pop these things up. But so back here we have plumerias, which are out of season. All the leaves are dropping off. We're going to get ready to start propagating some of those. Low pots up here, figs over here. And you can see just by the amount of splashing how much rain we've had. A little bit of outdoor activity in here with some sticks that are put in the ground. But so far, not too much. And lots of sticks in the ground here, as well as oranges on the ground. And we got a couple of buds swelling up on some of these bigger sticks. But my main intent was to get back to the Southern California heirloom type of figs. And like I said, I just picked up these two, which is a Osborne Prolific and a Cardinia. And those are going to go in seven gallons and they will sit over here right now with my Peters, Flanders, Bordeaux. There's a Black Mission. There's a Seedless Cadota and a Panache. So the main thing is first I'm going to get these sticks taken off it, cut all the tape off and I'm going to cut these down to size. All right, first things first, we've got to go ahead and get these labeled. So first we'll do this one. And then we have an Osborne Prolific. All right, I don't need a label. So we're going to take that off. And I'm just going to remove, and we're going to pull them out of these root pots and take a look how nice the roots look. I'm trying to get this in the same height that I have the rest of them. I want to make sure I get a lot of soil because I will be packing this down once I get my wood chips in place. And then same thing. Good amount of roots. That was a fat stick they stuck. And as you can see all the way down the line, great noting. Okay, both plants are planted. And now I'm gonna come through with my bark, mainly to keep the squirrels and the birds out and to help so I can pack these in to where they need to be. And it gives a little bit of protection for the elements. And these are going to sit here throughout the rest of their dormancy. Okay, so I want to keep all of the same height. And you can see that's about 16 inches. So this is safe to cut above this node right here. And then we can cut 
below that node, no, right in the middle of those two nodes, right there. Okay, so here are my cuttings. The Osborne's on the left. The Canadria is on the right. Having a hard time remembering that name, Canadria. But there it is, the Canadria. Okay, so for the Osborne, I'm going to take this one off, make it like a heel cutting. And then here, I'm going to be able to get three nodes if I make that cut here. And I can cut there and cut there. And I've got three good Osborne cuttings. On this side, same thing. I'm going to take a little cutting here because I don't want to have these protruding. This one's dead at the top, so I'm going to clean that off. And that one, two, three nodes there. I'm going to get a few cuttings out of this one. Okay, so I'm also going to take off this little guy. And then I'm going to cut it here. cut it here and I'm going to cut it here and those are the canadrias the reason why I'm doing these little tiny ones well, let me show you if we can show you in here this is just a little tub with one hole popped in it and vermiculite perlite mix and these little guys are starting to shoot and take shape. So that's all I'm going to do with this little one. I'm just going to stick it in here just like this and I'm going to close it off and I'm just going to forget about it. I'll refer back to this to remember if I need to which one it is in there but that's just going to sit up on top of the speakers there. All right next thing to do is I get these labeled. I'm going to go ahead and propagate a couple of these and a couple I might just wrap up and put away for now because I'm not really sure what I want to do. with the rest of these cuttings. Okay, so since these are all gonna be propagated indoors, I took them into the house and gave them a good wash with some soap and water after I labeled them. As you can see, each one of these has been labeled, the big ones in white, small ones in black. But since they're gonna be grown indoors, I wanted to just make sure I got all the, all the road gunk off, whatever germs off I could. Outdoors is not going to matter. They're going to get rained on. They're going to get peed on by the squirrels and rats. Who knows what's going to happen to those guys out there. But those are already well established and I don't need to worry about them. Okay, so we're going to get to these. All right, to set up my cups, I got my little scribe right here. I give five holes in the bottom. And I give it just a row of holes all the way around, like so. Then on the bottom, since I'm out of pumice, I'm just going with a little layer of perlite. Don't breathe that stuff, guys. Then it gets filled full of cocoa core. And for now, I just put a regular lid on it. Then they have to be labeled. All right, labeled Osborne 115.23. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of all the rest of these cups and get these stuck. I will be back. All right, so I got my holes punched. I have my perlite at the bottom. I'm gonna put some cocoa core into the cups. And like I said, put a lid on them right away because I've been known to knock these cups over and there's nothing worse than cocoa core all over the desk.
All right. Everybody's labeled. Everybody's happy. I'm going to take a couple little tiny hashes off this corner here. two we're going to do. I think I'll do one fat, one skinny like I talked about. And that could just push a hole in there first and then we glide the sucker through. I'm going to push that down nice and far. This one's going to need a little bit big. See that? Look at, do you see that? I knocked that over, but we didn't spill a drop. This one's going to need a little fatter of a hole. And there we go. I want to get this one down. We're going to get back to that. All right, so then we got a couple of Osbournes going on here. We're going to put a fat one. Look at that double lid there. Okay, everybody's stuck. And that leaves me a few more cuttings. Okay, so moving some around. I have these that are just local cuttings that are growing really great. Except for that one. Um, so what I'm going to do is I want to get these under the most heat and... So those are going to go up front here, where right under, right below the the boxes. Wait, now hang on. Let me say that again. These are going to go in here, where I have some heat elements that keep it. As you can see, the air temperature right there is about 85. So I'm going to put these four new ones right up front with these other four new ones, where I'll be able to keep an eye on them. I'm going to add some water to this and let them soak it up. There's a little bit too much water, so I just dumped it out. I'm going to go ahead and take care of those. And the rest of these I'm going to find a place for. Maybe even put them on the shelf. As you can see, these are growing along nicely. It's the name of the street. Same thing, name of the street. And over here, same thing, name of the street. So those are just going to go. These are going to sit in here. We're going to take a look and see how quick we see you root. So like I said, this is January 15th, 2023. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Come along with me on this venture as I fix up old cars, work on my fig trees, and do just about anything I want on my retirement. So thanks for watching. Take your head gardener here on Filet TV. Ciao.